So welcome to day two of my photography road trip where the wind is still blowing but we are now up in Skagen. Um, we got up here in the middle of the day and the light is very sunny and bright so not really great for some landscape photography so we decided to go for a walk up to the very top of Denmark where the two seas meet and um, for a short while I was the northernmost person in Denmark but probably only for about 10 seconds um, very popular tourist attraction there's a lot of people here and it is the Easter holidays at the moment but I didn't think I'd find any uh, photo opportunities just on this little walk but I brought the camera anyway and it turns out in about April time the seal pups that have just been recently born are just bathing in the sun so I'm not a wildlife photographer by any means but I took some photos nonetheless Here yeah, you can see the view out to the very northernmost part of Denmark in Skagen. There's a little tractor trailer which takes people from the car park up to the top so you can stand there and say that you've been. The first photo I took was quite close in, 400 mil, but I didn't quite get the focus right. I focused on the nose and the whiskers and not the eyes. Maybe if I had eye autofocus, uh, I might have got a better photo here. But I kind of like him anyway. Then on the second photo, I did a little bit better. I was a bit further back from the seal. I tried to get the shoreline as a leading line up to him, get a bit of the reflection of the sky in there, get a bit of blue. But the seal looks a little bit sad. Still the middle of the day and the light is still very very harsh but um, just trying to find some spots to take photos of the grey lighthouse well I think it's one of the tallest lighthouses in Denmark don't quote me on that look it up on Wikipedia if you want the real facts but I'm just trying to get a photo you know keep Instagram happy that Instagram trend where you've got something in focus your main subject and then you've got some foliage in the foreground at the bottom that's out of focus it's cropped four by five and it's all the rage at the moment on Instagram. So you've got to keep the Insta gods happy. Keep Mark Zuckerberg rolling in the Zuck bucks. Uh, so I've just found a little dip just to the north of the lighthouse. I've come down, I've just got the 24 to 70 on shooting at 70 mil, about F4, F5.6. Just focusing on the top of the lighthouse and then bringing the camera down a bit, the foliage is out of focus. I don't know whether these photos will be any good, but maybe the Instagram masses will like them. So let's see. So this was the photo you just saw me taking. I got a little bit too much grass in the foreground, covering up a little bit too much of the lighthouse, but it's a clear subject. It's nice light, a minimal composition. It's OK, nothing groundbreaking. Then I went round the other side of the lighthouse and decided to shoot up and because it was a really really bright day, blue sky, I decided to do a high contrast black and white edit, which I think is quite nice. Minimal composition, but I did have to edit out a big lorry on the left hand side. So we've left the grey lighthouse and we've made the very short drive across to the western coast uh, behind Skagen and again my pronunciation is terrible, but uh, we parked up in a little village called Hoyen. So I think J's are pronounced a bit like a, a Y, Hoyen. So we're on this little beach and I saw on Google Maps there's this old dilapidated house. It's sort of, oh, I see it now, just in the middle of the beach. Um, and as we're on the western coast, obviously the sun's gonna set over the sea provide some nice light across the beach. Might see if I can get some waves in there. I might shoot it from behind because the dunes behind it. So I've got about 45 minutes until golden hour starts. So I can go and try and find some compositions. And then when the light just hits that moment, when the sky lights up, then uh, I'll press the shutter. But 
It's nice and quiet down here. Just the sounds of the sea. hour has come and I didn't leave myself enough time to find a good position where I was standing. And I sat in the car and had a coffee trying to stay warm because the uh, wind feels like minus one, minus two in the middle. And we're right on the coast and with a lot of wind. So um, yeah, struggling a bit with this one. I'm trying to get up on the dunes, I'm still behind us there. I'm taking some photos. I've literally just had the drone up for 20 minutes, half an hour taking some videos, b-roll, and then uh, trying to take some photos as well from this side, from that side, from over there. But um, yeah, just not really finding a perfect spot at the moment or nothing that's screaming out to me. So I'm just doing a bit of hit and hope to see if I can find a uh, good composition. If, if in doubt, just spam the shutter and see what happens. And then maybe just uh, tidy it up in post-processing. The light is lovely and it's just a, a really nice coastline all the way down here. I'm just going to turn you around to finish this up. Look at that, beautiful, absolutely. The first photo I took was this one from pretty much the position I was just standing in. The foreground grass I got trying to lead down, it's got great light, a clear subject and I tried to balance the grass in the midground as well. I think the composition's okay here. The second photo, I went down in the little alleyway between the dunes, tried to get some of the sand patterns in there, but I think in this one they move from left to right and it doesn't quite work. And I'm, the edit is maybe a little bit oversaturated as well. You see this photo is clearly from the drone. You can see me standing on the dunes right there. The light is amazing. A nice clear subject with the house on the beach. But I could have lined up the sun, the house, the dune and the, the little path leading up to me a little bit better. And I'm not sure how well the diagonal shoreline works. But as you see me struggle on top of this dune in the wind, let's go to a drone footage montage. Day three, and uh, yeah, we slept in again, missed the sunrise. Um, looking at the weather, tomorrow it is going to be just grey and rainy. So we did come out to try and scope some places to maybe come for sunrise if we were able to wake up in the morning tomorrow. But looks like uh, we might just have to give up on that. We've come down to this little buried church, and I'm not going to bother to try and pronounce it. There, we are there at the moment, according to Google, and it's a beautiful little place. I've just been on the other side of, of the building, <clears throat> just trying to shoot through some uh, trees. These, it's all sandy around here up on the, the Skagen Peninsula. So there's little sand paths that run through. I'm just trying to get a get a sort of leading line up to the building. So we'll see how those turn out. I'm not too. Uh, enthusiastic about what I've already taken because the sky is literally just grey and nothing and it's everything's just really flat at the moment but uh, oh, we're having a nice walk and we're gonna go into the woods in a bit these forests look amazing a lot different to the forests in the UK because in the UK in the forest the forest floor is just brown and mushy and horrible whereas underneath all of the trees here seems to be this sort of like uh, yellowy straw colored sort of grass 
and it looks really nice. So we're just going to head into them and uh, take some photos. It's not really the conditions for woodland photography either, and woodland photography is definitely not one of my strong points. But uh, yeah, we're just going to have a little wander about. It's a beautiful place, and uh, yeah, go and take some photos. So this is actually a blend of two different photos, both taken from a pretty similar position around the church. There wasn't a very long, nice path leading up to it as a leading line, so I decided to create one myself. I think it works quite well, but the sky is a little bit boring, it's a little bit flat, and maybe in different conditions this composition and blend of viewpoints would work really well. So we've uh, walked past the uh, buried church and uh, walked towards the coast and got up to the sand dunes at the back. They're quite tall before they drop down to the sea over there. But just look back and whenever you're walking anywhere trying to take photos, always turn around and look back because there could be a decent composition or a nice shot the other way from where you're facing. And um, yeah, come up to the top of the hill and I put the long lens on. Look at that bad boy. And I'm going to shoot about 300, 400 mil. Um, probably f8, f11, something around the, that area. And just aperture priority mode because why not let the camera do some of the work for you. And you've got the church poking up above the tree line. And maybe if I just close that in as a single, very simple composition, it might be quite nice. The light is really flat and crap, but maybe a little bit of post-processing magic can bring out some of the details. Got a couple of shots to show you here. The first zoomed right out at 100 mil, and it's okay. I've got a little bit of foreground, a diagonal in there with the open space and the forest. Rule of thirds, clear subject, but it, it's just really flat. The second shot is zoomed right into 400 mil. A minimal central composition, rule of thirds again, but there's no depth perception here. It's really flat, there's no interesting light, nothing coming out on the trees. It's just a little bit boring. I told you woodland photography is definitely not my thing and it's mid-afternoon now and the sun's pretty uh, pretty high in the sky still so the light is is you know pretty bright the shadows are quite harsh but maybe the the trees will break that up a little bit I, I don't really know what I'm doing <laughs> in a forest trying to take photos but I'm looking at sort of leading lines with the paths going through trying to make some sort of order out of the chaos of all of the trees and it's it's quite difficult to compose in woodland photography it's not an easy thing to do um, so I'm either about to show you some really crap photos <laughs> and say that they're really crap and they just don't work or somehow I've managed to pull one out of the bag and get a really nice photo inside a forest we'll see and here it is the final edit of one of my photos from the forest I did manage to get that leading line and I did have to do quite a lot of editing to try and clean this up and make it look good and make it not look as flat as it actually was. I'm going to show you the raw photo in a second. But on the composition, the leading line's okay, but it's just not balanced. You've got a really big, bright part on the top left. There's only two trees on the left and loads on the right. The, the balance just isn't there. But I know, first attempt, not bad. But now you can see the raw photo and what I had to work with. Lots of pine cones everywhere, which took a long time to try and Photoshop out all of those and just tidy it up a bit. And to try and bring out some of the contrast from the light and the shadows because there really wasn't much there. But I tried my best. I'm afraid that's it for today's video. However, I did visit a lot more places in Denmark. So if you liked what you saw today, please give it a like, give it a subscribe so you get notifications when my next Photographing Denmark videos are available. As always, thanks for watching and happy snapping.